Hi, I'm Pat Keown, a Senior Research Analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper. I'm here to speak to you about the Fund Flows activity for the week ended Wednesday, May 2nd. We'll start this week's report by taking a quick look at the market activity for the week. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 Index were off 0.7% and 0.1% respectively. Uh, both indices started off the week well. They gained about, each gained about 1% on the first trading day of the week uh, on the strength of a Facebook uh, beating their uh, Q1 earning estimates. Facebook was up nine, just over 9% on the day in trading that day. Uh, after that, the markets met with some headwinds. Uh, it seemed that uh, the enthusiasm over a, a pretty good Q1 corporate earnings season seemed to wane and was overtaken by renewed fears of a U.S. China, US China trade war again. Uh, and, and news at the end of the week, the Fed announced that they would not be uh, raising rates this time at their meeting, uh, but did point to a possible rate increase next month as they, as they pointed to stronger inflation data that they've been seeing. Okay, let's turn our attention back now to the fund flows activity. We'll start by taking a, the, uh, a look, quick look at our macro groups, equity mutual funds, net outflows of $1.6 billion this week, taxable bond funds saw just over $500 million leave. Muni bond funds had about $350, $355 million leave their coffers, and money market funds took in $845 million in net new money. Okay, now we're going to turn our attention, take a, a more a deeper dive into each one of the macro groups now, starting with the equity funds. Uh, mutual funds, as we said, they saw $1.6 billion in net outflows for the week. Uh, once again, we see the continuation of the long-term trend where non-domestic equity funds are taking in net new money, uh, over $400 million this week, and domestic equity funds are seeing money leave. Uh, they had about $2 billion in net outflows this week. For the year, for the year to date, non-domestic equity funds have taken in just shy of $50 billion, while domestic equity funds have seen almost $24 billion leave their coffers. Let's move on to the equity ETF group now. Uh, net inflows for this group last week, uh, they took in about $2.7 billion in net new money. It's, it was their fourth straight weekly inflow. Uh, the, the largest contributors were the Spider S&P 500 and the utilities select sector Spider, which had net inflows of roughly $1.5 billion and $700 million respectively. On the flip side, we see the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF product with net outflows about $550 million. Of note, this was the first week this year that we saw net outflows from the emerging market sector funds. Uh, we, we speculate that this is in response to the, the rally in the U.S. dollar that we've seen recently. Let's move on now to our taxable bond fund groups, starting with mutual funds. Uh, mutual funds had net outflows last week, about $511 million. Uh, the main culprits here were high yield bond funds, about $639 million left their coffers in emerging market. Hard currency debt funds had about $150 million in net outflows. For the year to date, taxable bond funds have had net inflows of just over $45 billion. Moving on now, we'll look at our taxable bond ETF group. Uh, net inflows here for this group last week, they took in about $1.4 billion in net new money, pushing their year-to-date net inflow to just over $26 billion. Uh, the main contributors last week was the iShares iBox high-yield corporate product, had about $800 million in net inflows, followed by the Spider Bloomberg uh, Barclays high-yield ETF, had about $500 million in net inflows, and the largest net outflow belonged to the iShares Core U.S. Ag ETF, which had just about $500 million leave their coffers. Our next group to take a look at is Muni Bond Funds. Net outflows for this group last week had uh, 350 excuse me, $355 million leave their coffers. Uh, most of the outflows coming from uh, the short intermediate group and the general muni bond group. Uh, short intermediate saw $126 million leave and, and general muni had net outflows of $118 million. Our last group to take a look at is money market funds. Net inflows for this group last week, about $845 million, uh, which reduced their year-to-date net outflow to just, just shy of $47 billion. Uh, the big players last week were U.S. government money market funds. Excuse me, first, first peer group, uh, the largest net inflow belonged to money market funds, which had $1.7 billion in net new money come in. 
then followed by U.S. government money market funds with net inflows of $1.3 billion. And then we see institutional U.S. government money market funds with the largest net outflow at $3.4 billion. Well, that wraps up the report for this week. Please, uh, join, please, if you want to take a closer look at the data for yourself, please go to our website. It's www.lipperusfundflows.com. And please join us here again next week where another one of our analysts will be speaking about that week's fund flows activity.